Hello everyone, welcome back to this series on writing in Pseudorite. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about style and genre, uh, which are honestly the, I would say the, some of the most important, the style especially is, I'd say the most important field here next to maybe the story beats um, for creating excellent prose. And so you definitely wanna stick around and listen in on this one if you want to get good results out of Story Engine through Pseudorite. In the last video, we talked about the brain dump, right? Uh, and everything that you could do to optimize this brain dump. And so I've got everything I need here for my uh, the fifth book in my Fairy Queen series, which I'm going to be writing with Pseudorite. Um, the first four I wrote myself. And so it's very important to me that I make sure we're able to have a consistent style between them. And so... We're going to come down here, and these are the two fields that we're going to optimize. They seem very small and insignificant, but they are vastly important. And um, it used to be when this feature was first rolled out, you would just type in whatever you felt was good here and then kind of just run with that. And honestly, it was very difficult, honestly, to get a good style uh, without you know, adding somebody's name in here that um, for, that it's a published author or something like that, which I don't recommend you do for ethical reasons. And so now they have added this little thing here called Match My Style. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but first, let's see, like, what are these two fields and what do we put in them? Uh, so we, thankfully, you can hover over these right here. So the genre says it affects the tropes, the tone, and style of the outlines and prose a story engine generates. And, and you wanna edit this section to remove cliches or shift the tone. So, and this section also affects the outline, the beats, and the prose, uh, which is important to know. So, at the very least, you wanna just put the genre that you're in. Uh, in this case, it's a, mine is a young adult fantasy, Arthurian, and I could just leave it at that. The thing is, um, since this is used for both the beats and the prose, uh, we could put additional style information here. Um, I found that oftentimes the 40 words that we get in the style box are not enough, and there is a little bit of room here in the genre box. Um, but the thing is, if we go here and look at style, which says style affects the tone, word choice, and sentence structure, that the AI uses, it's the last thing that the AI looks at before writing the prose, so it has the most influence on the prose. And so I've tested this and tested the output by changing things in genre instead of changing things in style, and I found that while changing and putting some of the style information in the genre section here does change things, It the this style information is actually a little bit uh, stronger the effect that it has. So if you want something that's a little more subtle, you can put it here in, in genre and, or you can put it here in style. What I tend to do is I put genre and you know, if we look at here, it says tropes, tone, and style. Uh, so you can, it even says style. Uh, and so I put the genre and I put any tropes or tone information in here. So tone can often be one of those things that people might put it in the style. I would put it in genre and then for the tone or for the style, I would say focus on what the word choice should be, the sentence structure, um, how the dialogue should work out and all of that. But let's actually get into this whole thing with match my style because that that is super important. So I'm just gonna copy some text here. So if we go here and click match my style, it'll give us a field to paste 2000 words of our writing here it will then analyze those 2000 words now keep in mind this will use up some of your quota uh, but it's a one-time thing you won't necessarily need to do it again so i've pasted almost 2000 words here of my own writing so this is not ai written this was 100 percent me and then you can just hit next give it a second because it's analyzing All right, and now we've got some interesting things here. Uh, I would recommend just copying this and pasting it somewhere, just so you have it on hand, uh, because there might be a few things you wanna draw from this. 
Um, and you can also send it to a doc here, which will put it into a space in Sudorite. I'm just gonna copy it to a document I have here off screen. And then you just go to the next thing. So this is now boiled down the style to about 250 words. And what it's doing now is it's compressing that style so it'll fit inside the style box. So now we have, it actually didn't do it perfectly. It gave us 42 words instead of 40 words. <clears throat> but uh, this is okay, we can, we can start with this. So I'm gonna copy this also into my document here that's off screen. Um, and then we can also, well, you could insert it with the button I just clicked out of. Um, or you can just do it here. Now, since it, mine was 42 words, it isn't doing that perfectly. Uh, and so I'm just going to take off a word or two. Sometimes it'll have words like with ABC. You can just remove the with. There's no reason to have that. All right, so now I have 40 words here. Um, something that we could also do, so third person limited POV, that's good. Uh, that's a good thing to include in the style is the point of view. You could also say whose point of view, uh, but you could also, if you're hopping around between different points of view, that means you're gonna have to change it every time you're in a new character's point of view. Um, and so something you could also do is put that above the story beats when we get to those. And you could just leave this as third person limited point of view. Um, but then we have formal descriptive vocabulary, varied sentence structure. Um, that's a good one right there. Um, I sometimes add something like mixed cadence uh, because it basically gets the same thing. Vivid imagery, sparse but effective dialogue. I'm going to say, I don't want to say sparse, realistic and effective dialogue. You can just remove and because that's a word we don't need. Fast paced, action packed, recurring themes of duty, sacrifice, and struggle between good and evil in a unique cultural and historical context. So this um, doesn't need to be here at all, in my opinion. Now we could add this here. We could say theme of good and evil in a historical art, uh, let's say five, sixth century, no, I think it's fifth century actually, fifth century Britain, um, just so it has the context a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure if I like that, I might have to change it. Uh, and this, you will almost need, certainly need to change a lot of this. Um, and now I'm gonna give you guys a couple of things that I, so we're, first of all, we're gonna get rid of this sentence altogether. <clears throat> and now we have 20 more words to add in here. And so here are a few that I 100% re re um, recommend you include in here. I'll say mixed cadence. I'll say no mushy, Dialogue actually will say avoid mushy, melodramatic dialogue. Or character thoughts. So that's an option we could add in there. Realistic dialogue. Sometimes it's easier for the AI to understand something in a positive note. So saying it's realistic rather than saying avoid mushy dialogue will actually work better. Um, and then another one that I include is heightened conflict between characters. And let's see, what else could we put in here? Um, uh, those are the big ones that I tend to put in here. I'll leave a few words here because chances are, as I start generating the text, I will notice a couple of trends 
uh, of things that I don't like. And I can then come in here into the style box and add a little bit more to help try and avoid those things. And that is a key principle, I believe, in generating good prose with Sudorite is you've got to iterate a few times. You've got to generate some text and then edit it thoroughly. And as you are editing it, you will learn where the AI is stumbling and messing up. After you learn those things, you can then go into the style and try something a little different and see if it gets any better. You can ask it not to do that thing that you've noticed. You could ask to do it better. Um, oh, another one. We'll say deep point of view. And I guess this will use, to, use up. Uh, so let's say, I'll just say conflict between characters, deep point of view, show, don't tell. And now we're at 40 words exactly. Um, so yeah, those, those are the ones that I, I recommend. Um, so I might have to go in and tweak some of this later, but I think this is a good way to start. I do highly recommend you use every single word of your allotment and make sure that it is as maximum, like it is as optimized as possible. Hopefully I, it's my hope that they give us a few more words here because this is honestly the most important section of your entire of like the entire thing uh, until we get to the story beats and the prose at the very end, like this is going to have the most effect on the output and on how much time it's going to take you to do editing. And the more you can optimize this section and go back and, you know, like I said, iterate and try it a few times, the better it'll get. Genre is also very important too, uh, but a little bit less so. And so if you, if you're really pressed for space here, you can put information in the genre space. Um, but I would stick to, as it says, genre, trope, and tone, those kind of things. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit actually, cause I had just made a note up here in the brain dump, uh, about the tone and I'm just going to copy this verbatim and put it in here. And if I wanted to, I could really optimize the word count and everything, but I, I don't really feel a need at the moment. So that's what we got here. I hope this was useful for you. In the next section, we're going to be talking about this synopsis because now we've got everything that we need from the brain dump and the style and the genre uh, to start generating a unique synopsis. And I will see you then.